Dr. Rasha is a mom of two and a local GP. She is a dedicated member of the Salam Center community and is helping to run the children's program this Shahri Ramadan. Uh, today, inshallah, she's going to be talking to us about a brief history of women in medicine. Salwat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for the lovely intro. Um, when I first got the message from uh, Maghdad to give this TED talk, uh, my immediate reaction was, um, are you sure you've got the right sikafi? Um, for those who know my husband will know that he's the one usually up here giving the talks and not me. But he's home babysitting so that I can be here tonight. So thank you to him. Um, so I started my search for possible topics and decided to settle on women in medicine. Uh, from a very young age, I knew medicine would be my calling, and it was probably the moment that I was first gifted a play doctor set when I was a child. If I was ask, uh, to ask the mothers here, who has a toys doctor bag for their sons and daughters, I'm guessing most, if not all, would raise their hands, and in fact, we don't think twice about getting one for our daughters, for trying to encourage that empathetic nature in them. So my message today starts with us all time traveling back approximately 200 years in the UK to a time where little boys were encouraged to study and go to university and choose whatever career that they liked. But little girls were taught how to cook and sew and clean and become the best wives and daughters they can be. But in one house in Ireland, a little girl called Margaret Ann Buckley dreamed a big dream. She wanted to be a doctor at a time when the thought of a woman going into medical school was ridiculous. However, her mother supported her dream, so a bold and brave plan was put together. Margaret and her mother enlisted help from a liberal-minded doctor, and they privately tutored her for an entrance exam uh, to medical school. At the age of 17, when the time for application came, uh, she moved from Ireland to Edinburgh, and at that time, she stopped being known as Margaret and became James Barry. From that moment on, and for the next 56 years of her life, James Barry would live and work as a man, becoming a formidable surgeon. She was the first Irish surgeon to perform a caesarean section in Africa, where both mother and child survived. She never married, dedicated her life to medicine, and her true gender was only found after her death. A decade later, after successful petitioning of the government, an act was passed in 1876, permitting women to enter that medical profession in the UK. I wanted to briefly comment on uh, comparison to the Ottoman Empire, which has records of female doctors being in receipt of a salary as early as 1513. That's 350 years before the UK allowed women to become doctors. There's even a report of a lawsuit in 1635 that a woman physician called Fatima bin Abdullah, the judge ruled in her favor, showing that female physicians were viewed as reliable experts in Ottoman society. Fast forward to present day. Wow, in retrospect, we have it really easy. We can do whatever career we choose. Often the only limitation is set in our own minds. I can't do this as I'm not clever enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not able to do it with hijab. Yet, the point of history is to learn from the lessons of others. So let us encourage our daughters and sons to become the best versions of themselves that they can be. The sky is the limit. Thank you for listening. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.